Okay. So uh, first of all, I would like to ask you all, uh, how many of you have started practicing your CS1 sums on LMS World? Please raise your hands. The rest of you, when are you planning on starting it? Because it's already, let's say, mid Jan, so I think it's probably only two months left for your exams. When, when is your CS1 exam? Usually it's April first half, right? So anyway, those of you who haven't yet started practicing, please make sure you start today itself. Okay, it's 21st okay. April. Okay, so I want you all to start practicing maybe tonight itself or definitely tomorrow because it is easy. CS and is a paper that is comparatively easier in typing, especially if you've come from CM1. Especially if you've come from CM1, then CS1 will feel a much lighter paper from the typing aspect because obviously there is no uh, typing full and with these assurances. But there are certain catches as well in this paper. So it's important that you all have this read and often for the CS1 and paper, timing can become an issue. So it's very important that you all have the grasp over your typing from the very beginning. And that is only possible through practice. Even if you all can type very well uh, in general, it is a plus point. But trust me, it is not the same when typing the answers because that time you have to think of the answer as well as type it at the same time using all the notations and making sure that there are certain points which you just cannot skip. Even though, as I have said, they are lenient, but of course there are certain portions where you have to make sure that you are doing things in the correct manner in order to not be penalized or in order to uh, present your answer properly and put across your point properly to the examiner. Okay. So today what we are going to do is, first of all, I want to take up any doubts, any uh, queries or any places where you all felt that this might be a trouble area while practicing. So first of all, is there anything uh, from any of you? Any of you have faced a particular question or a particular portion that you might think is a little difficult in directing? Something you might not have discussed earlier and you came across that. All of you were good with it. It was easy to do it. Very doable. Okay, I assume then there are no doubts. So today uh, on our agenda, we will be going through and semi-solving, not completely solving, because I won't be entering the technical aspects. I'll be obviously concentrating more on the typing aspect of it. So we will be doing the September 2020 paper. And while doing it, we will be referring to the solution or the examiner's report as well, which was given by the institute, so that we know exactly what all points we have to keep in mind. So as you can see that they have given the uh, examiner's report also in a way that is typable on MS Word by you as well. In fact, from now they have made it a convention that all of the examiner's reports and all the sample answers are published in a way that you can type it on an Amazon. However, we will be discussing both the equation editor as well as keyboard notation. So don't worry for any of you, whatever is more comfortable, we will be concentrating on that one. Um, September. I think I have showed you all the September 2020 term paper uh, already in the first class, I think. Had I showed you on the September 2020 paper or the April 21 paper? 
and I think it was April 21 paper only. Hmm. It was April 21 paper. April 21 paper I had already shown you all in the previous class. So today it's September 2020 paper. Before we move on to the paper, just a very quick revision for notations that are specific to the CS1 paper. So as I have said, for the multiplication, do not go into uh, getting the times symbol. Just don't even try to get into the hassle. Straight away use the asterisk everywhere. Even if you're using the equation editor, just use the asterisk. Don't try to get a multiplication sign. For division, if you use this uh, forward slash, then anyway the equation editor, it gets converted to the x by y form. And even for the keyboard notations, simply use the forward slash. Don't uh, try to get the division symbol. For approximately equal, I would suggest that you will use this post, uh, this way of representing. In case you are not using the equation editor, of course, then you just write approximately equal to or approx equal to instead of uh, this because this looks a little weird. Even though you are at your own discretion, you can use this whatever. But my suggestion would be to use this one. For the inequalities, inequalities is something which is very, very, very important in CS1 because even if you forget to give the equal to out of the greater than or uh, let's say you give the equal to with the greater than, then it does change the meaning of your entire solution. So it's very important that inequalities, you all can use this form. This is very convenient. And in case you are using the equation editor, then anyway, when you will type all of this, it will get automatically converted to these symbols, right? So whichever way is more convenient, you go for it. Is proportional to proportionality again? In some places, you do require. If you are using the equation editor, you can simply go backward slash and write proportional uh, prop to. And uh, if you are not using the equation editor, don't go into getting the symbol of proportional to. Simply write is proportional to. There is no harm in it. Square root and again. If you are using the equation editor, backward slash with SQRT. And if for the keyboard notations, it's just SQRT. And in the bracket, you write whatever you wanted to put under the root. All right. Superscript a to the power x. In case some of you might feel some of you might feel that if you are using so many caret signs, which is the upward R sign, if you are using a lot of it, then your paper might look a little untidy and you might have trouble yourself trying to understand or find out your mistakes. So what you all can do is, if you do not want to enter the equation at all, I'll just remind the shortcut. It is control, shift, and the equal to and plus uh, key on the keyboards. It will automatically go to the uh, superscript. You can type the uh, portion in the superscript. And please make sure that once you are done typing, you again press the same keys, Control, Shift, and Plus, so that you come back to the normal alignment. Otherwise, you will be typing in the superscript alignment itself. All right. Similarly, for the subscript also, for the subscript again, the um, shortcut is just control equal to control and equal to it will automatically get you to the subscript you can uh, type in whatever content is there in your subscript and go back to the normal alignment by pressing control equally in this for some of you this might feel that it is taking up a lot of time and you're not getting the hang of it there is absolutely no harm you always have these ways to your rescue so you can easily use these it's completely your choice if you're if you feel comfortable for example for me now that i have practiced so much and given so many papers it automatically comes to me that whenever mentally i think of any squaring or any uh, subscript or superscript i automatically just press alt equal to and type it and then again press alt equal to it just it has just become a part of my habit. So that's why it's completely dependent on practice. Whichever method suits you, all of them are equally acceptable. You go ahead with whatever suits you. Now, this xij, 
this thing is something which is very 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 prevalent in the cs1 paper so if you are trying to type something on these lines for example it's a um let's say sxx sxx xy these things are very common in the cs1 paper you do not have to necessarily write it in this way you can just write it as sxx without actually giving an underscore it is a given or it is under, understood that the x the two x's or the uh, let's say x y are in the subscript it is understood all right so it's not necessary that in these places you have to give the underscore no just let me same for a um, superscript also if they have given two options x hat and x hat both of them of course it is more sensible to just write x hat even though the hat is on top you do not have to show that using a direct sign because obviously if you are writing this first of all every time you write it you are increasing one more character in your answer script so it gets more and more confusing and secondly it sounds or it looks so weird that x to the power hat that is how you would read x to the power hat which does not make sense so you see it's better that you just go on with x hat or let's say x bar b hat whatever you have to type for the samples or, or the, let's say for the mean or expectation etc you can just write it in this manner instead of constantly giving a caret sign or an underscore sign similarly for the exponential of course uh, when you are integrating or some portions there are a lot of characters in the power of the e for the exponential so of course if you try writing it in this way let's say x square plus 3y minus 2x so it might get a little confusing that you might lose track that it is actually e to the power of the entire thing it's always better to write exponential of anything e x e and then the or instead of giving the caret sign okay x r x r b have you discussed greek letters i think the examples which i have given they are the most common ones in the cs1 paper i don't think there is any other uh, greek alphabet that is used by you all so just a reminder for the capital for example i have shown you the different phi's phi i think it is the only capital letter in your syllabus so for a capital phi especially when using the cba of normal distribution make sure that if you write phi in capitals or you give the symbol of course symbol is always an option i hope all of you have taken out 5 minutes and made this box full of the symbols that you will be requiring in your exam for example new alpha beta pi uh um this one isn't as important for you all sum is summation is pounds is there of course instead of this you can take phi you can take theta you can alpha beta you can take the sigma all these signs are more expected in your paper Hmm. So these signs are more expected in paper. So to make sure your recently used symbols consist of those only. Okay. Again, symbols for infinity. Just write inf. Don't type the entire word. No point at all. Inf is perfectly fine for the different uh, for the derivatives. Of course. Even on paper, we use both the methods. We either write f dash s or we write dy by dx. I would suggest uh, to keep it small, write f dash x. But in some portions, in some equations, if you have remembered it, if you memorized it as d dx, then of course you you are always most welcome to type it in this form. All right, integration, summation, products, etc. All the large operators, very important logic. you just write int or sum of product whichever operation you are doing on the 
uh, function or the expression, you write the operation int sum or product. In the brackets, in the first brackets, you give the limits. A and B are the limits. After that, you put a colon to show that this is the function which we are integrating or which we are summing over. Okay. And then you write the function or the expression. So how do you write that? Make sure the function or the expression is also within brackets. So that is clear from where your summation or your integration or product is beginning and where exactly it is ending. Okay. So uh, in the paper, of course, we'll um, come across few of them. So that time we will be discussing in more detail. All of the statistical notations very important for you all. Expectation of x given y. If you all want, you can simply use the standing bar. Various covariances just like normal. Chi square distribution again. Chi square underscore m is what I will suggest because if you keep writing chi squared with this many degrees of freedom, it gets very long, very time consuming. In fact, it is better you just write chi square underscore and the degrees of freedom. NCR, in actually, we no longer write NCR. We either put it in the brackets like this, like a matrix, one by uh, two by one matrix, or it is always better. It is all the choose function. So choose between whether n and r the values you just write it in the bracket itself. Okay. Interest functions is not required for the CS1. So we will be skipping that. Life table functions are also not required for CS1. So I think that up to this portion is required for CS1. So make sure you all remember these and you all have access to these keyboard notations. Now let's move on to the paper. Excuse me, ma'am. So, um, ma'am, uh, where will yes. I find the gamma symbol? Gamma yes. symbol. Okay. Just a second. On the gamma one, see the gamma actually. Here, here is one gamma, this one, and uh, in some not exactly books, I would say, but some people they their gamma actually looks like a Y, so that's why maybe you had some trouble find uh, searching for it. But this is the gamma, like symbol. the one that we use in the sum, like gamma alpha, gamma beta. Yes, this is the gamma. Oh, oh you mean the uh, gamma yes, distribution? The symbol gamma. that we write, like gamma 2, gamma 3. This one. This one. That is actually capital gamma. So if, uh, as I had shown you, there is a small phi, a capital phi. Small delta is the D looking like delta. Capital delta is the triangle. Okay. So similarly, here. Here you can see the function gamma that you meant. Yes, no? See, just after the A, B, there is a gamma. Okay. Found? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. And uh, similarly, for the equation editor, in case you want to use a gamma in the equation editor, then you have to type gamma with a capital G. Because, of course, as I said, it's a capital gamma. So the first letter has to be in capital. Similarly, for phi, it's a capital. Just give me a second.
So, um, yes, anything else? Anything else or should we move to the paper? So let's start solving the paper and uh, we will be in the course of the paper. We will come across some more things. Now, very important thing is how do you know whether your speed is fine or not? So approximately for every mark, you get around one and a half minutes, approximately one and a half minutes. So now in that one and a half minutes, you have to make sure that, for example, let's say if it is a four mark question, just like the first one. So you will say that you have six minutes to solve the first question. But there are obviously some other considerations also. If it is a very simple question, then you cannot afford to take six minutes for the entire question. So out of the six minutes, I would suggest that you're typing question. If you're just, just imagine that if you're typing something just by looking at it and just copying it, that shouldn't take you more than I would say around three minutes. I think three minutes is enough to type out just typing the four marks answer. Now, the rest of the time is mainly for you to think. So, of course, if it's an easy sum, the thinking time comes down to, let's say, half a minute. So, you will just take four minutes for the sum. So, is that clear? How you are supposed to time yourself while typing. Okay. So, let's start with the first question. We will make sure that our, our the number is highlighted. Control D is the shortcut for making it bold and for increasing the font size, it's control shift and greater than sign. So then we move on to the next line and make sure that you are again coming back to the normal standard font size and the standard font when you start typing your answer. So the first question is let x1, x2, dot 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 x81 and the IIDs continuous random variables each with expected value mu equal to expectation of xi equal to 5 and variance which is sigma square equal to 4. So part 1 is determine the sampling distribution of the statistic t is equal to sum over i equal to 1 to 81 xi. So of course first of all I want you all to see or rather revise how do we write this sum from 1 to 81 you don't have to think how you will write i equal to 1 because that is not required since the only variable in your function is i it's clear that the that is a limit which you are dealing with okay then you give a colon and what are we summing over well, what is the function which you are sum summing that's x i now this same thing if we had to write in the equation editor First of all, we will get the sigma sign, okay? That, that is the capital sigma. So you can type it with capital S and IGMA. Then how do you give the limits over here? If make sure if you're using the sigma sign, then you have to specify I equal to, okay? So how do we do that? Very, very important thing. When you are dealing with the large operators, to ensure that you are getting an opportunity to write both the lower limit and the upper limit, First, write the lower limit, i equal to 1. And then before pressing the space bar to get it in the lower limit position, also type the upper limit. So together, you have to type both the upper limit and the lower limit with the underscore and caret sign. Only after that will you press the space bar. Because if you press the space bar before that, then you lose the opportunity to write your upper limit. This is one thing that many a times we struggle with because we do not realize that this is the reason why the error is happening. So that's why I'm just uh, reminding all of you, make sure you do not make this mistake. And XI is just simple. I think I will just increase the font size. Is my document visible to all of you? Probably what I'm typing. I think I'll just increase it a little. Okay, so the sampling distribution of the statistic, what will the sampling distribution be? 
it will be the normal distribution because we'll be applying central limit theorem so make sure again every step you only writing the final answer or only writing the uh, normal numericals etc will not fetch you the entire marks it is important especially because you're giving this exam from your homes it is even more important that you explain every step or every conclusion that you are making every step that you are moving forward to why you are doing it based on what you are doing it the principles that you are using right so make sure you write using the central limit theorem and then only after that you will write this so now the follow sign now the way of writing this the follow sign i think i had discussed in the previous class you can use the squiggle which is present just below the escape but it doesn't look very presentable of course it is something that you can do but it is better if you write if you just write p follows i think that is a better way of presenting it and normal uh, of course you can simple no, normal distribution is easy to write you can just write the numbers so as you can see in the examiner's report also, they have shown a total of three steps. What you all can do is you can skip this step because it is not net. You can skip either this step or this step. Either of the two you can write because both are equally acceptable. Even writing the variance in the square form is equally acceptable. You can leave your answer at this. Or you can just skip this step and straight away write this line. Okay. So that is how you have to choose that which steps to omit and which steps to make sure are present in your answer. Since both of these steps are essentially the same thing and equally acceptable forms of writing the normal distribution, either or can be done. Okay. But make sure that your answer contains this step. In fact, what I would suggest is before this step, if you all want, it, this is just a two mark answer, but let's say if it was a three marks, you must write the central limit theorem in the uh, symbolic form. You don't have to write the entire theorem in verse, but in the symbolic form, let's say uh, like the n sigma or the n, n sigma square, etc. These things you can write if it had been for three marks instead. But here, only this much, and then the next step is completely fine. Part two, calculate the probability that T is greater than T69 using the answer to part one. So of course, here we have to use the normal distribution. So uh, you will be requiring the use of uh, the capital letter phi because as you know, that is a CDTF for normal distribution. Now there are two ways. Either you can, of course, use phi or you can, uh, Either you can use phi or you can uh, use the letter z, which is the standard normal variable, random variable. You can use z, even that is acceptable. In that case, you will not have to use phi. So now for phi again, I would suggest keep it ready in your symbols tab. I don't have it over here. I will just add it. See, this is how the capital phi looks. Okay, D capital letter phi. When I writing, how to differentiate, we make the two lines. And that is what will also happen if you are writing in the equation editor. However, in the normal insert tab, the capital phi is a little fatter and the uh, small phi is a little thinner and shorter. Okay, you all can see the difference. So don't think that this is the wrong phi, this is actually the correct capital phi if you're using it from the insert tab. Okay, so I will just insert the phi once. Okay. So part two, over here we, we did not write part one. You have to mention part number as well. So part two, probability that P is greater than 369. 
is equal to now the standardization you all can instead of showing it in this way what you all can do is you all can directly move on to the letter z okay so you can directly move on to the letter z and show the standardization so if you are using standard keyboard notations make sure you are using enough brackets to differentiate between the different components of your equations okay you can write it in this way also correct and in the next step so this one is not exactly i think it won't come to exactly equal to 2 it will come approximately equal to however what i would suggest is these portions are not as important so even if you skip the approximately equal to and just write equal to because they will consider that you are just rounding it off this is something that is extremely technical you can just write the normal equal to also probability that z is greater than minus 2 so again over here instead if you all want to make use of the letter 5 if you all are more equipped or more used to do solving sums using phi of whatever then you all can also make use of the phi and finally write the answer very 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 important to give referencing from page by z of tables make sure you every time you even open the table book make sure you are giving the page number from which you are getting your value okay now in the equation at the this question didn't really require much use of the equation it, it was easily doable just simply using the normal keyboard notations however just for the phi i want to show you all capital phi okay see here the capital phi it has the two lines on top and bottom just like we had it hmm okay moving on to the second question is there any doubt or any uh, thing that you want to add to the first question no okay so the second question is a primarily mcq based question now mcq is something that you can expect in your cm and cs1 papers however it is not something that is a given in the initial few terms it was a given but now they are not saying that they will for sure give mcq you can expect them you, you can also not get them so don't sit in the exam thinking that, oh my god mcq is right don't start thinking about this in the middle of the exam if they are not giving you an mcq i'm sure they are making some provisions for making up for it for example yesterday in cm1 class also i showed them how they uh, instead of giving mcqs what they did was they replaced the equation certain portions of the equation using letters and all you had to do was give the values that you would insert in place of the letters so instead of making you type the entire equation what they are doing is they are just asking you for the parameters or the values that you would be inserting in the equation so that's equally time saving correct so that is how they will make up for it so your time will be taken care of as long as you have proper practice now in the mcqs in case you get mcqs first of all next page i taught you all how to do it insert a blank page and start typing the next answer never never ever make use of enter for doing this okay now for mcqs all you have to do is write the final answer you do not have to show any sort of wording even if it is for two marks three marks whatever you just have to write the final answer so let's say this one it's a three for part two let's say i'll just take from the answer a two the next one is a3 part 3 is again a2 and part 4 is 
part four, only the A part then is an MQ. So you have to specify. Don't forget to specify that as well. All right. So A four. Then you can move on to part four B. It might so happen, just like I was doing it. So it might so happen in the middle of your paper. If let's say I was supposed to type in part four over here, so it's getting automatically converted to part five, right? This is again an uh, a problem that many of us face in the middle of the exams or while practicing or typing. So how do you get rid of this? You simply, as soon as you see that something or this sort of is happening, you press Control and Z. So Control Z is the shortcut for undo. Okay, so undo. This is something that is automated. See over here, there is automatic numbering. There is the option of undo automatic numbering. So you have to press Control Z as soon as it happens. Don't think you will type your answer. And after that, if you press Control Z, then no, then what will happen? Whatever you have typed will get backspace because now the undo has moved to your typing instead of the automatic numbering. Correct. So every time this will happen when you are giving bullets, when uh, you are writing an equation, let's say the first letter might get capitalized. So to make sure that it does, uh, it comes back to normal. <clears throat> For example, this x over you know, right type, and I press the space bar. As soon as I press the space bar, word thought and beginning a sentence. So that's why it converted it into a capital letter. How do I get rid of this? I will press Control Z immediately. As soon as I press Control Z, it became back to a normal X, a small case X, correct? So, part four, part four B. One more thing, if you want to concentrate on your alignment a lot, I'm just showing it to you how it's done. <clears throat> Let's say for this part four, it was more towards the left and if you want to get this part for b also more towards the left all of you make sure your ruler is on you have to go to the view tab and check the box for ruler so then you will see this ruler on both sides of your answer script now this these two triangle sort of things they are actually to move the indentation the paragraph indentation so if i move this if I drag this towards the left, you all can see my entire whatever I have written is getting more and more left indented. Correct? Right? So that is how you make use of the ruler in case you want to make a presentation better. So again, you can see that something more automatic happened over here. I will just press Ctrl Z and it will come back to normal. Okay. This is a very helpful thing. So make sure that you all remember this. Because time and again, this keeps happening when typing on Amazon. Hmm. So part 4B was state a necessary assumption. So stating is very simple. You just have to type it. So I'm not getting into that. Determine the value of expectation of x plus y given x is equal to 4 using your answer to part one uh, to part four a so let's see Th this one was a two marks so of course a minimum of two steps have to be shown so what have they done they have also shown two steps what you all can do is you all might skip this step this is something that you can skip you can directly do it on your calculator if you want or if you all want to be extra careful then of course you can show as many steps as you want However, don't sit and type the entire equation if it involves a recurring thing. For example, over here, it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So instead of typing all, just type 2, 3 of them and in the middle, give 3 dots to show that it is a series that you are trying to type. Okay. It is completely acceptable to use 3 dots, especially if it is a, an extremely long line that you are trying to write. <coughs> Uh, we will just do number three today. Okay, we, we can do the number four today. Two more questions we will do. The rest of the paper we will do in the next class. 
so moving on to number three following data are available on three television factories that produce all the televisions used in a country they've given us the table how do you insert a table in ms word you go to insert and then you choose the number of rows and the number of columns that you require in your table in case you want to add any number of rows or columns you right click and you will get the option of insert now you can either insert columns to left right row above row below okay so that depends on which cell you are right clicking on corresponding to that cell they mean left right top and uh, above and below okay so you can easily add rows and columns if you want to delete then deleting is also as easy just select whichever one you want to delete right click and delete columns okay more than this no other table functions will be required during the exam for sure following data are available okay so part one again an seq so as you can see instead of making you write the entire base theorem they simply gave it as an seq so you so much of typing effort is saved and all you have to do is write the final answer so let's move on to the next page first Answer three. Answer three. Part one. Answer three. Part one. Let's see which one was it. It's A two. So all we will do is write A two. You do not have to write whatever is written in the option. It is optional. So, example, obviously, in this question, if someone would sit and write the entire option, then it would be stupidity because it is absolutely something that is not required. It is something that you do to be double sure. So, for example, in the uh, in the number two, you could have written over here if it's a two, you can write a two one by six. This you can do, but it is completely optional. So of course, in number three, no one has to sit and write the entire base theorem. The correct option, not required at all. So we will move on to part two. Calculate by using your answer to part one the probability that the selected television was reduced by manufacturer. So over here, of course, you have to definitely write this portion. You do not have to write the entire base theorem again. Here they just shown it because the sample solution. You do not have to show it. For the second part, you just have to write the left hand side of the equation. You do not have to write the right hand side. Instead, you just have to insert the values directly in the option that we had chosen in part one. You just simply put in the values for. Probability defective given mere factory belief. You just write 0 0.015. Okay, in this way. Now, how do we make sure that enough brackets are used? I would say make it a practice. Probability given defective is equal to now. If you are using keyboard notations, you have to use a bracket first. We over here into point four, and then for the entire denominator, you can just use one bracket. Okay, but make sure brackets are adequately used. And in case you are using the equation editor, although it's not required over here, again anyway you have to make use of bracket. So that the equation editor also knows when exactly to shift to the denominator. And then you can type in the rest of it in the denominator. Move out of the equation editor. Every time you use it, make sure you're moving out again. Last question for today, number four. A random variable y has the probability density function. 
function of y uh, given uh, is equal to a e to the power minus phi pi and all the details. Now the MGF is denoted by m by t. How do we write m by t? You can either write it in this way or I would suggest for uh, the MGFs, I would suggest that you actually move to the super, uh, subset and then write it because it does look neater and it is not something that you have to constantly write. So once and for all you have to do it, so it's better that you go to the subscript and then write it. But as you can see, this is looking slightly weird, right? So I would suggest go to the subscript and type the y. Now write down the bounds of the integration required to calculate m by t. So you can see this is a perfect example of how they are trying to make it easier for you to give the exam MS Word. Instead of giving it as one single part, where you have to show the entire integration and show the entire working, they are breaking it up into portions and they are just asking you one one component of your answer at once. Okay. And the entire typing portion they've actually given for two marks where you can do it on paper and you can just give the final answer. So the bounds of integration, no need to type I and T in the upper limit, lower limit, etc. Straight away, you just have to write lower bound so uh, the low you can just write it and They have written it in this form, integrate from B to plus infinity. You can also write it as lower bound is equal to B lower bound is equal to infinity. Okay. So yeah, this is also equally acceptable. It is completely on you how you want to write your answer. Identify which one of the following is the correct expression for M by T after um, after your calculation, etc., everything, you just write the final option over here again. No one has to sit and type out the entire option. It is too time consuming to type the entire thing. But just for practice and just to show you all, in case you would have to type this portion, in case it would have come as, uh, of course, if they would have given it as a proper sum, then they would have given a little more than seven marks for this sum. So don't worry about that. I just want to show you all how it would have uh, been done in case you had to show the entire thing. So first, using the keyboard notations, the MIT, once you have typed it out, you can just go on copy pasting it, okay? Because of course, you all have to keep thinking continuously that is there anything else that I might have to copy paste? If no, then just keep it copied on your keyboard. Every time you have to write it M by T, just paste it. Okay. So I just paste it. I don't have to type it again. Expectation of exponential T Y. Now integration is I and T inside the brackets. I just write B comma I N F. What are we integrating? We are integrating exponential p by into a exponential minus 5 by and d by the d by also comes inside the bracket it does not go outside the bracket because you are actually integrating the d by as well okay so maybe your d by or dx whatever it is it is always inside the bracket itself so is this portion here? Okay, what I would suggest is, I think we should give an asterisk after the A as well. 
so that it's clear because it might so happen that the examiner might skip the a and they might think they are just giving exponential and exponential okay so it's all better you give another asterisk in between now in the next step what we will do is we are going to copy this we will copy this because as we can see the next step is again an integration involving most of the similar things so we will copy paste it and we will edit it it's always easier instead of going on typing it might seem that who will think so much copy which part we have to edit but once you practice you will realize that this is actually a little more efficient than typing it again and again so now what we will do is we'll just simply type this portion and the rest of it you can just select how do we select this shift with the right arrow along with shift you press the right arrow along with shift I just press the right arrow and the entire portion gets selected. So I will just backspace it all together. Okay. So e to the power minus 5 minus t into y. All of this inside one bracket for the exponential and then one bracket to show the function that we are integrating. How do we give the limits on the box bracket? In the next step, first you give the box bracket. Inside you type in whatever you want to type. Uh, minus exponential of minus and by the minus you can better wave it inside the bracket there is no harm in using as many brackets as required exponential this is one hmm. you close it and now for the limits what you will do is you can write it in brackets also or you can simply write it as underscore b to the power infinity okay now this is also one way of typing this now suppose if you were typing this in the equation editor of course it would have been I would say comparatively easier to type this in the equation editor and much easier to read in the equation editor. Correct? So just quickly we will type it once. Integration. As I had said, limits make sure you are limits make sure that you are typing it together. Okay. This is also one problem that keeps happening a lot, which is why I personally always prefer to give the infinity sign from the uh, ribbon because many times it happens that the infinity sign does not take a take the shortcut. Okay, just give me one second. So inside we will type the equation e to the power e y a e to the power. We hope we will have to use brackets again to make sure that the entire thing goes in the power d y. Now, even if you are using the equation in editor, it makes sense to copy paste. Now, uh, sometimes for some of you, it might not look presentable that all your equation editor is coming as centrally aligned. So what you can do is you can simply press Control L, which is the shorter for left alignment. Every line that you type, you press, press Control L, and then it will come to the left side. And the next step is equal to A. Here, what we can do is we'll just simply edit this. And again, by using the right arrow with shift, 
we can just remove the unwanted portions. The same way, like we wrote over here, underscore and to the power together, we will use the same thing for the box bracket also, minus e to the power. And this again, if you want this portion, you can just copy it because it's easier than taking so much effort of ensuring that all your packets are adequately put and properly placed. You can just paste it. And then you can add the denominator. Now the limits. See, the problem that happened over here, these two became different equation enters. This minus sign is in the middle. Because of the copy pasting that we did, both of them turned into different ones. So, of course, since there is no bracket opening in this, this portion, there is no bracket opening. So, of course, how can we give the limits? So, first of all, what do we have to make sure? is that when you're pacing, whenever you're pasting, make sure you're inside the equation editor and then you're pasting it. Because if suppose you move out of the equation editor and then paste it, then it turns into another equation editor portion. Is it clear why this problem arose? See, now it has happened. Clear? And then you just type in the final answer. Type it quickly. Very important that you write ANS and highlight your final answer. Okay. Highlight your final answer so how? By making it both preferably. Last two parts. So write down the condition on T for MIT to be finite. A simple theory question. Determine an expression given the constant A in terms of B using your answers from for MIT from part two. So let's see the solution for this. All you have to do is solve this basically. So evaluating the function at t equal to 0 gives 1. And that is how we obtain a is equal to 5 e to the power 5 p. So this again is quite easy to type. All in the equation area, you could have written this as and similarly for the keyboard notation, it would have been okay. These are all the ways in which you can present this answer. And again, very important. To highlight your final answer. Okay. 
so are these four questions to clear to uh, are these four questions clear to all of you any doubts anything else that you might want to discuss regarding these four questions so all is good i want you all to keep practicing and uh, in the next class we will be finishing this paper and then i will be asking you all to practice some things by yourselves and then we will discuss that so that you all have practiced before we can move on to the speed portion of it okay so thank you all of you we'll end here today